Hi right, again, YouTube land. Bonus video for a Friday afternoon. You can tell that I have something really tedious that I'm trying to avoid doing. <laughs> this came in on the Mastercam forum, and it's a pretty cool problem. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people struggle with doing something like this, especially if you only have the three axis toolpads. And so the, the scenario is literally just an undercut chamber of some sort. I doodled it up. You can, you know, you can see from the, the dimensions what I made. Not really that hard. Two inch opening here, half inch radius and, you know, 320 diameter, uh, 300. Yeah. <laughs> three inches, 200 thou, uh, total diameter down here. And basically if you needed to come in here with like a slot mill and mill this thing, you're a little stuck when you only have the uh, three axis toolpaths. So we're going to be relying on old school flow line toolpath and reference points to get us safely in and out. So let's dig in. Uh, I'm just going to come down here to my 3D toolpaths and we are going to do a flow line toolpath. And um, I know I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but for anyone who hasn't watched those, the flow line toolpath, what it's doing is if you look at any solid surfaces, whatever, that are based on geometry, the in the background, the surface faces or the solid faces are made up of U and V directions. And, you know, but basically it's just like a sort of left and right, top to bottom, but a surface can twist and fold so it's not truly left to right, front to back, whatever. But a flow line surface is saying, oh, extreme extract those curves from the surface or the solid face and just follow those. And you'll see that if you switch into wireframe mode versus solid mode, you can actually see those, um, those flow lines that we're going to get like up and down would be basically pure vertical and left to right would be pure horizontal because this is an exceedingly simple part, but that's okay. So we want to machine this thing. Um, now we could set the flow line. Remember, this is the old tool path. So we've got to come in here and say, which way do you want to cut? Well, we certainly don't want to cut up and down. We want to change our cut direction. And do we want to start at the bottom or the top? Yeah, probably the top, I guess. Sure, why not? Um, and then which direction do we want to cut? We probably want to cut this way. Actually, no, we'd, uh, yeah, we'd want to cut this way so that way we're climb cutting. Okay, cool. Now you will notice, um, green check out of there that I do have my section view turned on, just so that way you could see it. The actual model is, I, I just took this purple shape and revolved it to, to get that, but we're gonna keep the section view turned on just so that way we can see what we're doing. All right, I'm gonna define a tool, uh, create a tool, and this is going to be a slot mill. There we go. And let's make this thing maybe 1.75, because we've got to fit inside of our entry hole, right? Uh, overall length, well, the thing's four inches long, so it's better be probably six. Thickness here, maybe a half inch slot mill. I don't know. Uh, let's give ourselves a radius, maybe a quarter inch radius on both the top and the bottom. Whoops, not 125. Oh, yeah. Two five. There we go. All right. That's what happens when I'm talking to you and not looking at my keyboard. Now, I don't really care about any feed speeds, whatever. I don't even, you know, whatever material doesn't bother me. What I care about here, let's just dig right in and get a toolpath and then we'll talk about the problems. Um, so I'm gonna come over to the finished flow line parameters. We're gonna set a distance of maybe, I don't know, we'll do a 50 thou in here and we'll spiral. Okay, cool. And now it's gonna warn you, hey, undercut tools are not supported in the gouge check. You may wish to disable gap gouge checks. Yeah, I, I probably do. <laughs> but let's just get a toolpath on and then we'll figure out why I don't like it, right? All right, taking a moment. S3. And... Okay, well, that really did not go very well at all. Um, oh, probably because my plane is wrong. No wonder it took so long. Let me just come in here, go back to the front, and we're gonna set planes to the top, 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 which is where I want to machine this from. There we go. That should go a little faster now because not everything's going to be in collision. All right, there's our toolpath. So where we were going with this is the problem. It's the toolpath starts 
with the toll embedded right in the stock, which is lovely. And we're spiraling around now. Now the actual toolpath itself looks great, no problem. And then it's going to end by retracting out. The first thing everybody tries to do to solve this problem is to come over here and start trying to monkey around with like the retract amount, or maybe even turning on a, a clearance. Um, let's see here, where's my, you know, maybe we wanna clear the top of the part. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I'm just gonna loosen up my tolerance a little bit so it doesn't take as long to calculate. Uh, maybe do a 5,000 clearance and I'm gonna increase my step to 100,000. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on. The other thing we're going to do is the reason it's not wrapping around at all is because we do have check flow line motion for gouge. Now that doesn't help you create a actual useful toolpath. All that does is prevent it from gouging on the undercut stuff. But basically, if you're using these old toolpaths, you, you don't want to. Uh, <laughs> you can't really rely on that anyway. There's no adult supervision here, so you're on your own. But we're also going to come in here to gap settings. We're going to turn off check. Um, gap motion and check retract motion for gouge. Okay, so regen that. Now we notice it's a lot faster. Okay, great. So this thing doesn't have much in the way of retract lead-ins, lead-outs. It's, it's kind of a, it's it, again, it's old, it's primitive. But there is a way to control this, right? What do you want to accomplish here? You want to drop this tool right in the middle to start out and then we want to retract at the end back to the middle. We can accomplish that with reference points. So we can come over here on the front page, we can turn on reference points, and we're gonna have to select our approach point. We would like it to drop, say, to the middle here. And for the retract point, we would like it to drop or retract to there. So let's just take a look at what we got now. Um, oops. Now what you're going to see is it's going to start the toolpath right where we wanted it. Perfect. And then it goes to our clearance position right above that part. So obviously the clearance is not going to help us here. So we're going to turn that off. Now let's take a look what we got. Okay. So we drop in there and we appear and then we start upwards. Well, I think our uh, retract amount is, is probably hurting us here. We could turn that off too. Um, to turn off retract as well and in this case since we're starting up at the top um, you know our feed plane needs to be zero there we go now we've got a, a part that starts right in the middle and feeds out and spirals down and at the very last pass we'll retract up to the middle cool the problem is how do you get the tool positioned into shape so that way it could drop down into the middle. Well, that is going to be a separate toolpath. I'm going to slide my little red arrow of doom here before that. I'm going to right click in and I'm going to go to my mill toolpaths and I'm going to use a point tool. Sorry about that. Got a phone call. I think I was here right clicking mill toolpath point and I was going to choose uh, the point and boom, there we go. Now that went, oh, <laughs> look at that. I noticed, uh, I noticed that the point appeared down there. That, that wasn't what I wanted. I want to uh, turn off 2D mode and I'm um, going to hit escape. No, I don't want to keep it. We're just going to start over again here. Mill point. It's a little manual to edit it. I find it easier just to, if you mess up the point toolpath, just, just let it go, man. Um, so, okay. Good, green check, and there's not too much here, of course. Tool number one, feed, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's no, you can't really see anything with it, but if you backplot them both together, now you'll see that we have this point toolpath that appears here, and so that's going to allow this next toolpath to have a position all the way down we go. And if we edit this thing, so if I just post this toolpath here, sure. Uh, yeah, don't ignore those. That's, <laughs> this is a heavily hacked up uh, version of MP that I was playing with for someone else. But um, we can see that you get a uh, G43, let's see here. So we wrap it to XYZ0C0, 0, 0, 
And then we wrap it down there with the G43H12Z3, which of course is the position if we analyze this entity F4, you can see that that is that position. So there you go. Hope this helps. Enjoy.